The next thing I'm going to show you is how to stitch a head of bow loop to place on both the top of the bug box and on your needle book. You'll use this small loop to hook over your uh, button, which you'll place on the bottom part, so that they, um, so you can fold your needle book and close it and close the top of your box. So the first step you're going to take is you need to find where the center is along either the needle book or the bug box top and you come up in the fold after tying a knot at the end of your thread and what we're going to do is come up in the fold just maybe one thread over right from the fold you're going to count over 12 threads 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and go down one thread up, just like you're doing a cross stitch over one thread, and you're going to go down. Then you come out one thread in a hole, one thread underneath the one you just went down in. And you go across and you go down, take your needle down one thread above where, you, where your first stitch came out of. So you're making across over 12 up one. This creates a secure base for your head of bow looping or buttonhole looping if you want to do it the way Ray has suggested. The next step is to come up exactly where you did your first, exactly where you came up for your first stitch. And what you're going to do is I usually hold the thread that I'm using between two fingers and hold the linen or box top or needle book in the other three fingers that I have like this. So you're keeping this fairly taut and you can see what you're doing with your needle and the remaining thread. Take your needle, you go underneath your cross stitch once. Then you go underneath the loop you just created. And you pull securely to the left all the way to the left. And what you're doing is you're coating this cross stitch that you just created with these knot stitches all the way across. As many as it takes to make it be solid all the way across but not bunched up. It's very important that you do not pile your following stitches on top of the previous stitches. So once again you go underneath your loop underneath your cross stitch, then underneath your loop, and you pull to the left tight so that it fits neatly against the previous stitch. And we'll just do a couple more. Underneath your cross stitch, underneath your loop, pull securely to the left. Do it all the way across and then secure your thread in the back with a knot or just underneath your, your stitches on the back, however you want to do it. So when you get to the end, you go down here with your needle and pull taut to the other side and secure your thread. And you want to make keep the, even, the tension fairly even on there. I usually don't have a problem with it. You just pull the same way every time as, as well as you can. And that's it. What I'm going to be showing you now is how to join two of the panels of the box together. And it's basically a ladder stitch and you're going to be using your basting stitch, your basting fold line stitch as your guideline. 
So first of all, you're going to make a knot in two threads at the bottom and come around the back of your stitch and you come at the very base of the panel. Then you pull your needle up through that first basting stitch and you find the matching one on the opposite panel. And you take your needle and you go down into that. Then you go up along your basting line underneath two threads and come up. Then you find the matching stitch or hole on the other side and you go down in it on the other panel. You go down in it, you count up two threads along the basting line and you come up with your needle. And you're creating a little ladder here. Now the tension that you want is you need to leave, leave enough space that you create a 90 degree angle here so that you get a box shape. Okay? You keep doing this, you go across to the matching hole on the other side, go down with your needle and come up two threads above that. You do that all the way up the side of the box till you reach the top. Then you need to take a few extra stitches to anchor your thread before you stop, start your little raised chain stitch. The second part of joining the sides of the box involves a raised chain stitch that goes over the top of the ladder stitch. To start this, you want to take your thread go up underneath one of your ladder stitches pull up to the left then you take your needle and you come down from the top and go underneath the ladder stitch again and you go over the top of the loop you just created like that. Then you pull as evenly as possible to match the previous stitch. So let me show you that one more time. You go underneath your ladder stitch, pull through, then you come down from the top and go underneath the la same ladder stitch again and go over the top of the thread loop you've just created. It's like a buttonhole stitch called the raised chain. You want to kind of keep your stitches centered and as even as possible so that they match the previous stitches. One more time. <laughs> 